I love you, but I'm not in love with you, she said, and my world is ending. What the hell is going on and what do I do next? Or maybe you are, you're already starting to work on this and you're wondering, where am I? Where am I in this journey? And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Hey, I'm Jeff Allen with Great Men Move Mountains. I just had this, where the hell am I in my journey inspiration this morning when I was at the gym, actually. I took notes on my phone. I came home and I want to knock this out for you. So let's just get right into it. Where am I on this men's work journey after she says, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, right? So here's the 10 stages of men's work journey after she says, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. So who the hell am I? I'm Jeff Allen. I've got, according to this, 744 videos up as of today. Maybe that's a lot. Maybe that's not. Going on 2,000 subscribers. This is my YouTube channel. And here's how many views I've gotten over the past, what, since December of 2018 is when I first started posting on this channel. This, this blip right here is when I paid for some advertising, which wasn't a good idea. So if I could take that off the graph, I would. I just share this because it's, you know, who the hell is this guy? I, I retired from the public school system in 2016. I was a social, emotional, and special education teacher, professional, head of my department, head of PBIS, uh, positive behavior intervention support, the crisis prevention team. I worked with all the most difficult kids, especially boys in the school system. And when any teacher had trouble with a particular kiddo, usually a boy, they would come to me. And that's what I specialized in back until I retired in 2016. Then I started my own private practice, working with families for the next three years, full time, of course. And since then, since the beginning of 2019, which is why this channel, you can't see it here, but started in the end of 2018. Since 2019, I've had over a six figure practice counseling and coaching men around relationship. And especially when she says, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And we go on this men's work journey of improving ourselves, trying to win her back. And so here's the stages, okay, real fast. Number one is hair on fire. Fuck my life. Why is this happening? I don't know what to do. I cry. I beg. I plead. Um, I can't focus on work. It feels like the world is ending. I'm worried about absolutely everything. And I'm spinning and waking up at three in the morning, right? So by the way, guys, what stage are you in? And am I leaving off any stages? Yeah. So what stage are you in right now? If you're watching this on YouTube, if I eventually put this on YouTube, post in the comments. If you're watching this in the private forum, right? Take a note and put in the comments below here. What stage are you in? And did I miss a stage? Okay. Stage number two, why can't she tell me what she wants? Uh, I can tell her what I want, but it seems as though whether going out with friends or just focusing on work or wanting just more space, more space. Why can't she tell me what she wants? That's stage two of a man's work in this journey in particular. Stage three is, well, then fuck her. You know, she can't tell me what she wants. It's, I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what she's doing when she's going out. I don't know what she's doing on her phone. Uh, hopefully you're not spying on her phone because or anything because that never works out well. But you get to this point of maybe fuck her. Maybe you're reading books, maybe you're not. Maybe you just found this video and this is the first thing that you're watching and you're in this, well, fuck her then because if she can't tell me like I would tell her, then screw her. And the huge mistake here is thinking that she is the same as you. Women are not the same as men. She doesn't think the same as you. She's not goal oriented the same as you most likely. She's most likely much more emotional, whether it's internal or explosive on the outside. She's not like you and she doesn't know how to tell you what she wants. She doesn't know what she wants half of the time. She just knows that she was drowning in the past. So she doesn't know what to tell you. And so we get this defense mechanism, right? And anger covers up our own pain and guilt and insecurity. And we get to fuck her then. After that, well, maybe I need to chill out. Well, maybe this anger isn't helping me. Maybe assuming she's broken or fucking someone else or Maybe I need to take some responsibility for myself. And whether you're already here or not, this is stage four out of my quick 10 stages. Stage five, you actually start to take care of yourself regardless, regardless of what she's doing, regardless of what's going on in your relationship. You actually start to slow down and you start to take care of yourself. 
you're going to the gym regularly, you hopefully have some kind of coach or maybe a therapist or a group or, you know, great friends. And, and it's hard to do this with friends because they know you so well. So a group online, hopefully you're reading some great books. Hopefully you're journeying for yourself in some kind of way. And you're starting to build your own life, regardless of how happy, sad, disconnected, angry, whatever she's got going on in her with her life, what you see. Six is feeling powerful within yourself now, because you're actually starting to take care of yourself. You're starting to like hit, hit like more weights in the gym. You've read some books. You start to realize, yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes in the past. I maybe was codependent with her. I sought her validation. I treated her like my mother. I let go of romance and I didn't give her enough attention or I was controlling and I didn't realize it or I took my work stuff out on her or I expected her to soothe me when I wasn't really putting much effort into the relationship. I haven't been continuing to court her, right? So all these mistakes you realize that you've been making in the past. And when you as a man start taking responsibility for yourself and take action, that's when you start to feel better. That's when you start to feel more powerful. It's not about the actual touchdown dance. It's about the journey toward that touchdown. It's the journey toward being the better, deeper, more calm and clear man that you want to be is what helps you feel more powerful. So having a path and taking action along that path is what makes you feel more powerful and more confident. Number seven, you actually practice getting good at being alone, whether that means you're separated in the same house. That doesn't mean you've gotten divorced. It doesn't mean you're necessarily literally alone, but you're getting good at realizing the relationship is either already dead or it's absolutely on pause right now. And you have to validate your own self. You can't be relying on her for anything really at this point, because she still is telling you she wants more space. She still doesn't know what she wants. So you actually get good at being alone. Sometimes this is during literal separation. Sometimes this is during a divorce process. And sometimes this is just limbo land where she, you're, kind of in this gridlock, you're living in the same house, maybe you're sleeping in different rooms, maybe you've tried so many different things, but you, you realize, okay, I'm either being patient right now, or I just need to get good at being alone. Number eight, oh, okay. So if you want to see more of my stuff, go check me out, greatmenmovemountains.com. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, Great Men Move Mountains is my YouTube channel. All right, back to I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Number eight, She's curious about you again, and so are other women. So you've actually started to take care of yourself. You're feeling powerful within yourself, no matter what she's doing. You're practicing good at being alone, meaning you're rewriting the story of your life. You've grieved the loss of the dream of what you thought was going to be with your wife, whether you're together still or not, whether you're separated or divorced or not at this point. And she, your wife, begins to be curious about you again. And so are other women because you've built this foundation of your own self. And the details of that are for another video or another time, right? If you want to get in touch with me, please do. And we can talk more specifically. This is just about the stages. Number nine, you, you feel, holy shit, women actually love this new version of me. Whether you're dating your wife again and starting something that's renewed or you spend plenty of time getting good at being alone. And now you're starting to chat with other women again. Holy shit, women actually love this new version of me. And finally, number 10, you make a decision in your marriage one way or the other. And by this point, either your wife or other women are being feminine with you. They're being open with you. Sexualities come back probably better than it's ever been. You know more about yourself. You're no longer anxious about this work. You have daily, weekly, monthly routines, and you have men in your corner to support you, whether it's me or a group of guys or a community online or whatever, or maybe you've started a men's group locally. You're starting to support other men. By this point, you're going to be able to make a decision in your marriage one way or the other. So that's my hard and fast, the 10 stages of the men's work journey. What stage are you in? Post below, ask me questions, jeff at greatmenmovemountains.com. I'll see you in the next video.
generous.